you mean they won't send me alcohol or cigarettes? Well, what do you expect me to do? I, you know what? I left YouTube because of this shit. And now that I'm back, I want to make sure that everybody knows that this channel is for adults. What? It's smoking? What? That sounds made up. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. Ship them. Ship them all. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> hey, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and I'm back on YouTube. And to make sure that it stays that way, I've got some adult-themed <laughs> things to review for you, but not just yet. In the meantime, I've got some A-Team figures, the Galoob A-Team figures from 1984. But let's keep it adult, motherfuckers. Raz Holly, hit the music! Hold on a second, Gorilla. If you're gonna review military figures, I need to be here to make sure you get everything right. Oh, and why is that? I don't know if you're aware of this, Gorilla, but I was once a, a Navy, Navy SEAL. SEAL. Yes, yes, I've only heard that about a billion times since I've met you. Yeah, you wanna be in the video? Fine, fine, just keep it adult. Well, what do you think I am? Some kind of slack jawed f Not that adult! Raz Holly, hit the music! Never hear it on the radio. Never hear it on a TV show. And it's always is on earth. Never have broken no pain. What the fuck do you think we're playing? As long as we are here And it's all it is a night Playing for rock, it is our game Make a reason to bring it all the same Pass me another beer In 1984, toy company Galoob released a fairly robust line of figures, vehicles, and accessories based on the hit television series, The A-Team. The show would run for four years. The toy line, however, sold poorly for the most part, and when you look at it, it's obvious why. 90% of this line was dog shit. If it wasn't Mr. T or the van, it sucked ass. These three and three quarter inch figures to start are generic as fuck. The titular A-Team are all sporting long sleeve jumpsuits. Now I haven't seen every episode of the A-Team, but I don't remember the one with the day glow cat suits. And take a look at these bad guys. And that's what they called them, the bad guys. Wow, I bet they spent all afternoon coming up with that name. They sold these in four packs on the same shelf as G.I. Joe, which had been previously released about a year before. And when you line them up side by side, you can really see why these were a flop for the most part. Now moving on to the six inch line. B.A. Baracus, played by then uber popular Mr. T, looks great. And I remember having this figure as a kid, and calling people fool and sucker with it until my dad popped me in the mouth. Anyway, like I said, anything with T or the van was awesome, but it seemed like those came from a completely different line compared to the rest of these piece of shit figures. I was able to score a loose, incomplete set of these recently, so let's take a closer look at the A-Team. Okay, so let's start with the leader here, John Hannibal Smith. Um, it becomes painfully obvious when you see the rest of these figures that aren't Mr. T that this line, it, it seems like it's a completely different line. But let's take a look at the first figure here. So uh, he's the leader. He's got his uh, cerulean fucking pants on. Um, they all have a fucking butt front. Um, these like fucking butt dicks that they have on the, <laughs> these are fucking terrible. They're so terrible. And this, this is where they would hold their accessories. Now these things came with a fuck ton of accessories, like guns and tools and things to carry and stuff to strap on their backs and stuff like that. But this is the, like, they have these tiny little 
holes in order to carry stuff. And so, he, he, he does he look like, does he look like who he's supposed to look like? Does he look like the actor that played Hannibal? Kind of? Kind of? Um, not really. Face man! Face man! Oh my goodness. Okay, so. Does it look like the actor? Does it look like who it's supposed to be? I guess it's more recognizable than maybe the other two out of the three shitty figures in this. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I, I think so. Uh, mine's a little fucked up, but still, like, you can tell what it looked like when it was new. He's got the butt front. He's got butt on the back. He's got these wide, childbearing hips for some reason. And this tiny little hole. These tiny little hand job hands that they have. Um, I have no idea why. And let's take a look. So far, look, jacket zipped up. Um, almost, you know, three quarters of the way or, or almost all the way. Um, pretty much the same thing. It is a different sculpt, but it's, you know, like jeans, shoes, jacket, got a collared shirt underneath. Um, it's the most boring fucking thing. These things have to be exciting to, to kids to play with without having known the source material. Um, and these aren't really doing the job. Lastly, <laughs> before we get to Mr. T, we've got Howlin' Mad Murdoch, which, and he's got this weird side eye thing going on, like, and he looks like, and he's got like, out of the, out of the three non-Mr. T figures in this line, He's got the most personality, although still has the butt front aforementioned jacket and but he look at this tennis shoes and they've got a paint application on there that's you know more than one color. So that's kind of cool. He's wearing some looks like Chuck Taylors almost or something. And uh, and yeah, still got the little little fucking hand job hand, the fucking HJ team over here. Um, but still, you know, with the cap, you can kind of tell who this is supposed to be. Um, they, I guess they tried to make him look kind of, kind of wacky, kind of crazy. So he has that <laughs> look on his face. Um, okay. <laughs> I like this one. This is like, after, out of the three that aren't Mr. T, this is probably my favorite one, uh, is Murdoch. He was, you know, a cool character on the TV show. Um, but the figure, I mean, honestly, and for what people are charging for these things online, it's fucking dog shit. And so, finally, here he is, Mr. T, B.A. Baracus. Um, this is a, you know, for all intents and purposes, a Mr. T figure. <laughs> you know, and they, when they put these... Uh, you know, they, they wanted to make sure you knew who this was. They're not going to put him in any sort of non-Mr. T gear. He's not, he doesn't have a jacket and the, you know, and the pants and the, you know, pulled. Like, look at this. Look at this. He's got his, he's got his denim vest, his gold chains, the rings. He's got the, look at the face. Like, it's a great sculpt. It looks like who it's supposed to look like. He's got the fucking Chuck Taylors and the socks, the fucking tube socks pulled up, <laughs> fucking the workout pants. Dude, it looks like who it's supposed to look like. This was one of my favorite action figures growing up, and it's crazy to think that it came from this line, like when you see the other figures. Um, he's even got his little uh, Mr. T tattoo. I um, mean, mine's a little rubbed off here, but man, dude, such a fucking sick figure. Um, you know, basic posability. He's got, you know, a bend at the knee. Um, you can, you know, jam him into a vehicle if you need to. Uh, you can move his arms all the way around his head. His head's uh, kind of squishy um, and, you know, goes all the way around on the, on the little peg there. 
Um, it's a cool, it's a cool fucking figure, and yeah, I'm glad I, I picked this one up. But unfortunately, and you could probably guess that these are the most expensive ones that you're gonna find out there when you're going to, you know, you're going to grab one of these again. It's a cool figure. I fucking like this, Mr. T. The rest of the line can suck my dick. Well, that's the A team. A bloated line built around a single figure and vehicle. Did you have these growing up? Did you like these figures? Let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think. Oh shit, it's here. Okay, check this out. I was browsing around eBay just recently looking for bendies and shit when I came across one of the strangest collectibles I have ever seen. Cartoon smoking characters. That's right, this is apparently an actual licensed by Hanna-Barbera product. Yogi Bear, Quick Draw McGraw, and Huckleberry Hound all kicking back having a smoke. It's crazy, right? There's no manufacturing year on the packaging, but the seller states it's from around 1964, which makes it about 56 years old. The directions read, put a cigarette in the mouth, light it, blow out the flame, and watch him blow smoke rings. Now I know what you're asking, did I buy it? Hell no, the seller wanted over $300 for the fucking thing which I feel is justified considering how rare it must be and the batshit craziness of the whole thing. If I had that kind of money to blow, I would have for sure pulled the trigger right then. But then I saw that the same company had sold these figures individually. And that's what I've got right here, so smoke them if you got them! <laughs> it's Cartoon Smoking Characters by Elvin Toys! Okay, so here it is, Cartoon Smoking Characters uh, by Irvin, or Elvin? Elvin Toys. Uh, so yeah, here they are. These are the individual ones made by the same manufacturer, made in Hong Kong. Actually, they're called Lovable Smoking Traveler's Pet in this packaging, but these are the very same. Um, Figures from the uh, from the packaging that we saw for over three hundred dollars um, for a little cheaper than that, and uh, you'll see here on the packaging they come with uh, uh, has some pre rolls, <laughs> a little baggie of them. Um, so we've got Yogi Bear, we got Huckleberry Hound, and we have Quick Draw McGraw. Let's take a look at Huckleberry Hound because there's something important here I want to discuss with everybody. Um, sometimes when you get these uh, these old um, these old figures and stuff, these old toys, um, you'll find that that like every once in a while you'll find that there's it didn't get punched through. It's perforated, but it's it's not punched through. Um, what do we do about that? I mean, you know, like this survived. It's from the mid '60s. You know, the you know the seller said these were from you know '64. They reckon so. You know, man, this lasted so long, and it was it was able to you know to, to stand the test of time. The corners are pretty sharp, and man, it's a pretty good sealed figure. And like, but it's got this hole. Like, what do I do? You know, like you know what? We the easiest way to fix this: take your pinky finger. You pop that fucking thing out. Get the fuck out of here. And then, you know, you can just fucking open it up. Get out of here. Fucking there it is. Huckleberry Hound open and and ready to ready to smoke. Um, and there's the little the little baggie. Um, let's get these others open too. Okay, so what we'll do is we're gonna take a look at these figures individually. Here is Yogi Bear um, with his signature green hat. Um, these are made out of a very thin plastic. They have a little hole on the mouth. Um, there's a, I mean, they're molded. It's kind of hard to describe. It's very, very thin, like, yeah, it's like, it's hollow. 
obviously. I don't know how these are going to work, um, but we're gonna find out. So um, here is Quick Draw McGraw with his, his look. These are painted really poorly, um, allegedly made in Hong Kong. I even think Quick Draw can't even stand up. Ugh. Yogi can't stand up. Uh-oh. But anyway, here they are, all three of them, the smoking cartoon figures. But I know what you're waiting for is to see if these actually fucking smoke. Okay, so I fashioned a little bit of an ashtray here for, uh, for Yogi Bear, and we're gonna find out Let's see how this works. Light it, blow it out, and um, oh my God, look at it go. And there it is, Yogi Bear, have a smoke. I mean, there's really not much more that can be said about this. He's, it's smoking. It's completely ridiculous. I can't believe it still works after all these years. Um, yep, there it is. <laughs> Hey, hey, Dan Classic. How's about lighting one up with your old pal Yogi? Man, I don't know, Yogi. Stop being such a bitch, boy, and a smoke up. Hey, you know what? Fuck you. Give me one of those.